Stone Cold Steve Austin is said to be hesitant about those upcoming WrestleMania plans. We also take a look at updates on Cody Rhodes' WWE status, and a third WWE Hall of Famer has reportedly been revealed. More on that in a little bit. Yes, hello everybody. We said there'd be more news and there certainly is some. Uh, we're going to go straight in with the Stone Cold Steve Austin update. He's just got to throw a cold bucket of water over everything, doesn't he? What, Jim Ross? <sighs> so in the most recent edition of the Grilling JR podcast, Jim was saying it looks like Austin is not going to do anything at WrestleMania as far as wrestling in the ring. He and I have talked, but at the time we talked, he didn't know what he was going to do and he didn't sound overwhelmingly enthusiastic about about it. Now you might think, well, why has he said that? Well, JR goes on to explain, people have to understand that Steve is a perfectionist. Even though he stays in great shape and looks wonderful, especially for a guy his age, he looks great. He can do a photo shoot and it looks like he can be Steve from any era, but that's the athlete in him. He likes to train, eat right, and all those things. But JR goes on to explain that Austin ideally would have probably liked a longer build to get in more shape and know that he wasn't going to let anybody down and potentially yeah. tarnish his legacy. I, It's sort of similar to, I guess, when you look at it from that side, it's similar to the Shawn Michaels WrestleMania 32 situation because yeah. apparently he wasn't given much time and he was kind of nervous about not being in ring shape and you know it's, it's like you're Shawn Michaels you always look good at the oh, matter to the average he, fan I think <laughs> it, there was rumours that it might have been a match or yeah. a more prolonged thing to do and then he came out looking amazing and yeah. then Foley and Austin were just also there just like hello <laughs> and Michaels was like proper in but shape I get that side of it you know I get the side where you don't want to potentially risk tarnishing the legacy yeah. I, like, all of that is stuff that you've really got to way up if you're Steve Austin right now and while you know fans are baying for it and foaming at the mouth for the idea of Steve Austin coming back and again there'll be comments underneath going which fans uh it's Steve Austin you know like it, it, part of me's like it doesn't really matter but at the same time, it matters massively to him, of yeah, course. Yeah. yeah, and again, JR seems to be kind of echoing what we heard earlier today. Check out that news video if you haven't seen it already, that we don't yet know yeah. whether it's going to be a match or a segment or a brawl or what, what's going to happen. I see it to, like going from a segment into like a brawl. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so as well, but we, we'll have to wait and see. Uh, moving on now to Cody Rhodes. There's been some updates on his situation. It's a strange one. Is he going to WWE? It seemed like it was set in stone. Yeah. Now it seems less certain, so we'll take a look at what's being said. Uh, Dave Meltzer says negotiations hit a snag. He's had multiple offers. He has to make a decision. Excuse me. Uh, WWE wants the decision to be made soon for obvious reasons because mm -hmm. we're approaching WrestleMania. The ball is in his court. Um, he also mentioned that Cody could potentially go back to AEW if that's what he wanted. I, it, it's it, kind of coming off the heels of the news report, like the rumor doing the rounds the other week, which I think was from Meltzer, which was that you know WWE's offer to him was very much based on the idea that he remained a surprise, mm. and when things got out, you know, offers started to change, things started to kind of. Pressure kind of okay. was applied at that point. Now it's like, okay, well, what are you going to do? There's only so much time to main you, as you said. And I, part of me thinks he's just going to go back to AEW, you know? Fair enough. Well, Fightful Select said that there's a lot of rumors running around about Cody Rhodes' current status and that he himself is well aware of it. Mm -hmm. Fightful then say, on Saturday, we reached out to Cody Rhodes, who hasn't offered up much insight or detail as to what's going on. And he said, I logged on earlier and saw some wild stuff. These are mad times. Uh, then they asked him to elaborate and he sent them a picture of his dogs. <laughs> Of course. <laughs> so, I mean, fair enough. Um, Fightful also asked around about what people in WWE may have heard about Cody Rhodes. Most talent were never specifically told that he was coming into the company, but there had been plenty of speculation backstage, yeah, obviously. Yeah. And pictures apparently regarding Cody Rhodes versus Seth Rollins at WrestleMania. But they say of late, they've heard that the creative end of that is uncertain. People don't yeah. really know. Apparently, one source within WWE told Fightful that nothing had changed as far as they knew. At AEW Revolution weekend, they heard from several AEW stars who were of the belief that the deal was off and that he wasn't going to WWE but they were just purely speculating so right. it's quite an interesting situation uh, yeah and I guess only time's going to tell really isn't it I think so it's a, it's, it's a weird story and it just keeps mad getting strange. mad old wrestling world speaking of the mad old wrestling world <laughs> remember Big Demo I used yes. to manage him remember oh that? you did yeah, yeah. Then you're a former w client then he went to WWE Sacked yeah, you I, I was the advocate yeah. for Big Demo get rid of the dead weight um, then he went to WWE as Killian Dane obviously um, had a run in NXT there was a couple of appearances on Smackdown as well. Well, he is set to make his new Japan debut, not in Japan itself, but at Strong Style Evolved on March 20th, taking on John Skyler from Impact Wrestling. Um, that's I'm all exciting. for this. Yeah. I'm yeah, all yeah. for this. New Japan would do well with a big lad like Damo. I think so as well. I think that... Um, 
you know, I, I don't really pay as much attention to the strong style, the US based yeah, stuff, yeah. but they're obviously using it kind of as a, a testing ground sometimes to yeah, trial it's, people. It's almost like a springboard, isn't it? Yeah, they've yeah. got people in from different promotions and they just sort of put them together and see what happens. But if he catches the eye of maybe New Japan and they think we could use him in Japan itself, that could lead to some great matchups as oh, well. God, I think it'd be there's fantastic. so many. This, yeah. so just give me, give me Demo Ishii. Demo Ishii. Just, oh, Demo Shingo. Oh, there'll be so oh, many good ones. Man. Yeah. Yeah. So um, hopefully he does well there, and, and we'll keep you posted if anything comes of it. But yeah, big Demo, Killian Dane. Best of luck to him. Lovely guy as well. Yeah, absolutely. We love big Demo. Uh, moving on now to Fightful again, who are talking about one of the big matches at Revolution, which apparently underwent some changes. They're talking about Britt Baker, who retained her women's title against Thunder in a match where many were speculating that this would be the big title change. Yeah, I was kind of ready for it going in. I was like, ooh. There were rumors of a Thunder Rosa injury in the week building up to the match. Right. People think that might have changed the idea somewhat, or maybe they didn't want to put the belt on her if she might have, if her might injury be, might have worsened. Yeah, like a risk to it. Maybe. Um, but again, I'm not sure if they were ever confirmed whether she was indeed injured or not. Um, Five will say they've learned that the title match had the finish change multiple times in the weeks that preceded Revolution all the way into the build up. They say, we weren't given a reason as to why, but the company is clearly setting up a rematch for the St. Patrick's Day Slam show, which is in Thunder Rosa's hometown in a couple of weeks. Oh, that could be the title that change could, there. Yeah, that could maybe be yeah. the moment to absolutely cement Thunder Rosa. I think so. I believe, uh, oh, I'm not sure. I think she's from San Antonio, but I don't know. Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean, that would be that would be pretty oh, good. Oh, huge. Um, and finally, it seems as though we know the identity of the third Hall of Fame inductee <sighs> for this year's Hall of Fame class. We've already heard The Undertaker. He's been officially confirmed, as has Vader. This one hasn't yet been officially confirmed, but Andrew Zarian of Mad Men says that he reckons that it's Sid. Oh, mm. oh, that's pretty good. Yeah, uh, I think Sid I'm, I'm it. happy for him. I'm mm. a bit disappointed you didn't give him like a big intro, like grab Sid. your scissors. It's Wait, Sid. Do a WCW style. It's Sid. <laughs> there you go. I didn't know where you were going to go there with do a WCW style. I was like, but, no um, leg jokes. He's oh no, not at all. He's had a big legacy in WCW, but also in the early days oh, of legacy. Uh, oh yeah. no, no, I didn't mean that at all. Also in um, in WWF in sort of the late uh, early nineties uh, yeah. through to like he, he, I, I think Sid might have been the first ever person to win the WWE title on Raw he was legit when I was like little little he was one of the only people that terrified mm. me like mm. I he was just huge and scary yeah. and yeah had a great feud with Shawn Michaels where the, the MSG crowd kind of favoured him over Shawn Michaels yeah. even though he was the heel he had that main event of Wrestlemania against Hulk Hogan which went a bit wrong and the, his name in Pyro yes yeah. I think he was one of the first people to kick out of the leg drop because Papa Shango oh, yeah. missed his cue and yeah, he just yeah. had to kick out yeah, yeah. fantastic <laughs> <laughs> but I'm no Sid, one of the, I think one of like the truest monster heels in all of wrestling history. Like and he was to nobody more than Vince McMahon when it's softball season, right? Absolutely, yes, of course. <laughs> um, so congratulations if it's true. That that is via Andrew Zarian of the Matt Men podcast. He tweeted saying he's heard that it's Sid, and I think that he fully deserves it. If oh it's true. yeah, for sure, yeah, without a doubt. Shaping up if that's true to be a monstrous Hall of Fame class, oh, like Taker, yeah. Vader, and Sid all and in it, one year. Vince is inducting Taker. Yeah. I, I we're doing it in front of a live crowd again this time, aren't we? I believe so. They're going to cut it down, but I'm excited to hear what Vince is going to say. Oh yeah. yeah, I think it should be very interesting indeed. But um, there we go. We'll keep you more. We'll keep you updated if anything more emerges about any of these stories. Do let us know your thoughts and opinions in that comment section down below. And thank you very much for watching. Check out our earlier news video today as well if you haven't seen it already. And take care of yourselves out there. We'll see you very soon. Tie bye.